Uh, when I, how, how can I select the windows? Okay, now. Do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So Good. you can play the PowerPoint. Okay. Yes. Great. So shall we start, Mohanad? Shall I? Yes. Yes, okay. ready. Thank you very much um, to all of you. And uh, this is the last, uh, but the most important and most awaited session for our learning festival, uh, Generative AI with ChatGPT and tools. Um, something which uh, we were all waiting a lot. Thank you, Mohanad Mawani, who is the certified uh, and well uh, research trainer on Generative AI, cyber security, and all the latest technologies. He is a certified trainer by EC Council and um, other bodies. Mohanad, you can give your own introduction when we start. Sure. So uh, the format of the session is uh, this is expected to be an interactive session, so you can post questions in the chat. And uh, we have one hour and at the end we will do a uh, small uh, feedback and we will do a group photo as well. So because this is our last session, so we will turn on our cameras and we will do a group photo and, and I will take a screenshot. So thank you again once again for joining. People are still coming in, but Mohanad, I think we can start. Thank you. OK, thank you Azi, for the uh, introduction. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Good evening. So wherever you are coming from, uh, as uh, Ghazi said, uh, we will be talking about generative AI and um, chat GBT or, uh, you know, uh, chatbots in, in, in general as well. And uh, my name is Mohanad Momani. I've been a uh, security uh, consultant and technology consultant and speaker and trainer uh, for the last uh, 30 years. Uh, I have uh, more than 42 uh, industrial certifications. Yeah, that, that's it from our end uh, here. That's it. Uh, we have Inam with us. Right again. Can you can you mute yourself, please? Or let me do the. OK, fine. Sh shall I move on? Hello, Yagazi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. OK, OK, fine. So um, Again, uh, I've been in this domain uh, for so many years and I have uh, more than 42 industrial certifications. I'm also uh, authorized trainer and instructor for uh, many international uh, providers. So in, in this 50 or uh, 60 minutes uh, session, we'll be talking about an introduction to uh, AI, and then we will talk about uh, generative AI and what is generative AI and the types of generative AI. And then we'll talk about text generation and uh, how to make and create uh, an effective prompt for uh, ChatGPT. In addition, we will be talking about uh, ChatGPT applications and uh, challenges. So even though we will be uh, discussing uh, those applications as we uh, move on during the, the lecture. So to start with, we have been hearing about uh, AI as a, as a buzzword for the last uh, 10 or 15 years. So um, AI is basically stands for artificial intelligence. So before we explain what is artificial intelligence, let's define what is intelligence. OK, so intelligence is related to to the human brain and it is basically the ability to make decisions based on some pre-existed or stored knowledge so it is a property of the human brain to recall the stored knowledge and learn based on this stored knowledge so this is intelligence so this a property of a human brain uh, it is a very essential property and that's why you know people try to mimic this a property and 
try to make machines and computers learn and you know think just like uh, humans so this is when the uh, artificial intelligence let's call it discipline has been uh, introduced so the artificial intelligence is basically enabling computer systems or machines to make decisions or tasks in a way that mimics the human mental capabilities or intelligence. So those capabilities will enable us as humans to recognize speech of people. For example, if if someone is calling you on the phone, so right. the first the first minute you hear that person voice, you can recognize that person. You will say, aha, this is this is Mohanad. Good morning, Mohanad. How are you, Mohanad? OK, so this is our ability or this is a property of the human brain to do speech recognition or to identify and recognize, you know, the speech and sound and voice of, of others. We can also use this property in image recognition. So if I you know, show you a picture of a, of a car, you can easily identify it or recognize this as a car. If I show you a picture of a book, you can easily say this is a book and so on. So those important properties of our, of our human brain, we want to mimic them. We want to replicate them. We want to create machines and computer systems and robots that can do and mimic and replicate those, those features. So this is when the artificial intelligence discipline, which is actually, uh, you know, science in, in in computer science, which is a small science in computer science, and it requires this artificial intelligence. It requires that those computers or machine learn first in order to recall the knowledge. So we want to make those machines learn. So this is simply the introduction of artificial intelligence or the learning process in, in machines. So there are two approaches to achieve learning or to make machines or computer systems and robots learn. In the first approach, the human knowledge or facts is actually represented by certain symbols or represented in certain logic and uh, relationships manually. And this is basically uh, a lengthy process, and this is called classic AI or symbolic AI, where all the knowledge is actually programmed or represented in some knowledge base, and then we can use this knowledge base in order to create a new knowledge. It is a lengthy a process and it is somehow manual process. We want this to be automated. We want the, automa the, the learning process to be automated. So the second approach is called machine learning, which is basically uh, called modern AI, or sometimes they are calling it big AI. So in this machine learning, we are enabling the computers or the machines to learn without this explicit manual programming or this manual uh, process. We can do this. We can make those machines learn through two main techniques. And those two main techniques are called supervised learning and unsupervised learning. So we are all, you know, mothers and, and fathers and supervised learning is basically uh, has, has basically came from the process of teaching your kids or your babies. OK. And learning or making them learn. So in supervised learning, you are telling your your child or your kid that this is a dog, this picture is called a dog. This picture is called uh, a cat, for example. So you need someone to tag or label the knowledge or this input. So tagging or labeling, this is called supervised learning. 
So in unsupervised learning, you are leaving your child alone to discover the properties of a dog, for example. So the dog has, you know, big ears, has a nose, has two eyes, has four feet and legs and, you know, and so on. So you leave this a process of recognition or identifying the patterns or the properties of a thing to the to the system and then you present the uh, a picture or a knowledge that has not been seen before and you ask the computer or the model what is this so this is mainly called the unsupervised uh, learning so in in supervised learning sorry that was called the unsupervised learning so back again to supervised learning just to give you you know uh, an example about supervised learning on the uh, left hand side of the of the screen here we have provided some data or a training data set to the to the computer and to the machine and this data says that if the size of an apartment or a house is 90 meter and you have three bedrooms or three rooms in this in this apartment and the age of this apartment is three years and it is actually one one floor the price of this apartment is fifty thousand dollars if the size or the area of this apartment is 120 square meter and it has five rooms and the age is 15 years and it is on third floor then the price is 70k so we provide this this information and this is called the the training information or the training data or the training data set and then we ask the computer or the model to predict the cost of a an apartment that has 170 square meter with or composed from five rooms and the age of is at four years and it is on third floor. So now this is called prediction or this is called regression. So we want to calculate or predict what could be the cost of this uh, apartment or a house based on the uh, training data that has been uh, provided. We can also do something else called classification in supervised learning. And in, in classification, we are you know, presenting many different uh, things to the, to the computer or to the model. And we are telling that this picture is, is a dog, this picture is a dog, and then we are uh, presenting, and then we will show the, the model a picture of a dog that it has never seen before and we are expecting that the machine to identify this as a dog based on what it has uh, learned so here we are talking about labeled data so we present the data with the label the label which means what we want this correct output to be so this picture is a dog so this is a pair and this is the data and the output, the expected output. Then the algorithm will analyze this uh, training data to find the patterns and the you know relationships. And of course, the goal is to identify and predict some new unseen uh, data. The very classical application of uh, AI is is facial recognition. I'm sure all of you have mobile phones right now and in your mobile phone you have set facial recognition for example which means your mobile phone or cell phone will unlock if you are you know presented or you, you have presented or shown your face to the uh, to the camera or to the mobile phone. So how does this process works it actually based on the supervised learning uh, process or the supervised uh, learning of uh, ai so in this case we we train the model which means we present a picture 
to the to the model and we will tell the model this picture if this picture is presented this is the name of the person if this picture is presented this is the name of the person if this picture is presented this is the name of the person and we you know plug in so many different pictures and labels and then later on we can show the model a picture of Vinton Cerf that it has never seen before. And we are expecting this model to recognize the picture, the new picture of Vinton Cerf <laughs> as Vinton Cerf. So this is basically the, the, the uh, supervised learning process. And it is, uh, it, it requires a training, uh, of course, and it requires the input pairs, which is this input. If this input is seen, then it produce this output. OK, so this is mainly. This is mainly the uh, facial facial recognition, for example. Now, in an unsupervised uh, learning, the model will be trained on unlabeled data, so we are not labeling the data, but we are presenting this data sets, this data set, and it is left to the model to identify the similarities and the differences and a grouping of this data. So the, the model will, will learn that all those pictures, they are grouped together. All those pictures, they are grouped together. All those pictures are grouped together, okay? So of course now, the goal of this unsupervised learning is to discover the hidden features or patterns and the uh, insights of those things, for example. So an unsupervised learning, mainly we're using it in customer segmentation and in anomaly uh, detection, for example. So we identify the, uh, the things that are different from normal uh, operations, for example. So algorithms or machine learning algorithms, they are trained on on data sets. So this is the core, the core requirement of artificial intelligence nowadays is to have data sets available. If you don't have a data set, then definitely the machine will not learn. So we need data sets in order to create this self learning model that can predict the outcomes that can predict the prices, for example, that can classify the information as uh, dogs or cats or as uh, as tumor, uh, for example, and classify it without a human intervention. So now machine learning performs the classification task. And uh, we can, of course, use machine learning to identify tumors or to detect tumors, for example, for example, in uh, X-rays or X-ray pictures of, of some patients, because we need to train the model on, on tumors. So we will show and give the, the model many, many X-ray pictures or X-ray images of the tumors. And then later on, we show the, the system or the model, the, the new patient's X-ray image. And we are expecting the model to say this is a tumor or it is not a tumor. Also, we're using uh, uh, facial recognition and we are using artificial intelligence and machine learning in Tesla cars, in the full self-driving mode in, in Tesla cars. Because the pictures of the cars, the pictures of the buildings, the pictures of the uh, road signs are, you know, presented to the to the model. So all of this information, all of this data set has been, you know, entered into the model as obstacles, as objects, and the the model now will have to recognize those pictures, those objects later on during the uh, full self driving mode. So for example, if the Tesla car, you know, faces uh, or sees 
uh, a traffic light, for example, that is red. So the Tesla car, the full self driving mode of the car should stop or should stop this uh, this car, for example. If the car sees uh, a stop sign, so it should stop based on the uh, sign or the object that have been uh, seen through the, 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 uh, the, the model or the car, for example. <clears throat> so the process of, of machine learning, as we have, we have seen, it is based on learning. So, and it is based on mimicking the human brain. So the human brain is composed from what is called in neurons and the human brain has around 86 billion neurons and each one of those neurons is connected is connected to 8000 other neurons and each neuron is doing a simple pattern recognition task and once this a neuron recognizes a pattern, it sends a signal to all in neurons that it is connected to. We don't want to, you know, dig. You need to unmute yourself. So you are on mute. Mohammed, we cannot hear you. Sorry, you're muted. Mute. Can, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can. OK, I'm trying to mute uh, everybody or mute all, but yeah, mute all. OK. So am I audible now? Yes. All right. So in in the previous uh, discussion, we we said that we need to uh, replicate this concept of human neurons into software computer systems, and this replication is implemented using what is called the artificial neural networks, that is inspired by the structure of the human brain. So artificial neural networks they have building blocks that are made of interconnected nodes and those nodes are called artificial neurons and those artificial neurons they are mimicking the brain cells and those artificial neurons they are learned now so this is the learning process where information uh, is processed by those artificial neurons and the connection is adjusted between them based on the data and so on. And then the training where artificial neural networks are trained on large amounts of data to recognize patterns and improve their performance over time. So now this is the, the, the picture or this is the input and all those in features of this picture or input is being learned by those artificial neurons in order to recall the future uh, knowledge, for example. So artificial neural network is computational model, which is, you know, based on the human brain and human brain and neurons to recognize patterns and solve the complex uh, problems like humans in a, you know, uh, similar manner that humans uh, do so thus enabling machines and computers to learn from and interpret data in a human like manner so this is the main concept of artificial neural network so deep learning is actually using those artificial neural network and it is a branch of machine learning that is made up of artificial and neural networks with so many layers. Artificial and neural networks, they attempt to made to, to model human learning by digesting and analyzing massive amounts of data or information, which is, you know, called the training data. So now tasks performed with that data repeatedly. So when we use this data repeatedly, it's improving the accuracy each time in the same way 
humans study and practice to improve their skills. So now deep learning is, is based on artificial uh, in neural network and it has become very, very popular due to the fact that data or the introduction or the availability of big data. So the more data or the bigger the data, the better when it comes to artificial and neural network. And of course, it is leveraging computer power or it's actually requiring computer power and GPU, which is the graphical uh, processor unit. And also um, it has been, you know, becoming very commonly used and popular nowadays because of the introduction of something called the transformer architecture in 2018. So images are being recognized, speech is being recognized, um, natural language uh, is being entered into a computer program or a model or a software and then the computer or the software will output certain you know human like uh, language or responses this is all uh, due to the uh, deep learning uh, algorithms or the learning by layers we call it so now each layer will process information from the previous layer extracting some features as data goes deeper and deeper into the uh, you know the other uh, layers now semi supervised learning which is called uh, semi supervised it's basically a training on both small amount of labeled data and large amount of unlabeled data so the process this uh, process is becoming more complex because it will a process a lot of features and a lot of uh, patterns than a traditional machine learning. So these are the uh, you know features of deep learning and uh, machine learning and the differences. So here we can come to the point where the relationship is is identified between machine learning and deep learning. So this is computer science and under computer science. Uh, there's a discipline called AI and AI under AI. We have something called machine learning and deep learning is the, you know, a subset of uh, machine learning. So when it comes to deep learning, we have two. You know, main types of uh, deep learning. One is called discriminative and the other is called generative. So in 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 this we are actually saying that user will enter or will input a variety of prompts, we call it, or inputs, and the model needs to generate because it's called generative. So the model, the system will have to generate new images, will have to generate new text, will have to generate new data or solutions that have not been explicitly programmed or encountered during a training. So Gen AI or generative AI evolves as it continues to train. So the more you train, the more it uh, it evolves and it becomes uh, better. And especially when it is trained on large unlabeled data sets. So in order to predict outcomes in the same way or the same ways as humans might act or create in their own. So deep learning is computationally expensive, which means it requires a huge amount of computer power, a huge amount and large amount of uh, data uh, as well. So uh, training these complex models requires a lot of power and they are also data hungry systems and they require a lot of uh, data. So what is Gen AI? As we said, the Gen AI or generative AI is one type of uh, deep learning. And as we said, in deep learning, we have 
two types. We have something called discriminative and the other is called generative. So to describe this discriminative AI, it focuses on making distinctions between data or within data. And the goal of discriminative AI excels at classifying things based on the existing data. So this is this is a dog and we classify this dog as a dog and not a cat, for example. So so based on the features that are you know extracted from this picture, we can say this is uh, a dog and then uh, it is actually it trained on on labeled data and it learns the relationships between the labels and the uh, features. So generative AI in generative AI, we are, you know, the user, we will input a variety of prompts. So we write certain uh, inputs and the model has to generate a new content like image and data and uh, text, for example, that has not been encountered before. And it is, as we said, it's a trained on large amount of data. So here we will tell the system of the model to generate a dog, for example, a standing dog. We can tell it to generate a, a standing dog with a blue eyes, for example, and the system or the model will have to create this picture of a dog, of a standing dog with a blue eyes, for example. So we are telling the system, we are telling the model. So this is the enter or the data that we are uh, asking the model to do. So it evolves, so uh, Gen AI evolves as it continues to, to learn and it predicts or creates outcomes like images, videos. We can also tell the system to uh, create a summary, for example, of a, of a book. We can tell the system to draw a picture of a car, of, a, of certain uh, features. We can also tell the model to uh, create a video, for example, or or an audio. So use cases have have multiplied as a you know companion for writing, for research, for coding. Now we can we can do it. We can rely on it uh, heavily. And it is basically leveraging different learning approaches. So in Gen AI, we are based or we are using supervised, we're using unsupervised, we're also using the semi-supervised uh, 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 learning. And it also leveraging large amount of unlabeled data to create what is called the foundational or foundation model or models as as a base for AI system to perform multiple tasks. So here, this is the foundation model, which is composed of the labeled and unlabeled data. And this is the, the training code or the algorithm, and it will generate a new content that could be, you know, text, that could be code generation, that could be image generation and uh, and so on. So Gen AIs have some models. So one model or one type of Gen, Gen AIs model is called generative image models. OK, so in generative image models, the input is an image. So we enter an image to the system and the output could be text, for example, or the output could be another image or the output could be video. So we can use this image model, or we are actually using it probably without us knowing in Google image search. So in Google image search, we are, you know, providing and uploading a picture to the image search, to the image search, and then the model or the, uh, the system will generate links for us for those pictures that are found in the uh, on the web for example an image uh, an image uh, as an output we can do image editing we can ed edit an image that has been provided to the system or in video we can create some animation on the 
uh, on the image, for example. So Google image search. I have provided this picture to Google image search and the output. It, it displays so many different links for exact matches of this image. So I think this is the exact match and similar matches. So this is based on an image to text model of the uh, generative AI. <clears throat> so let's talk about the text generation where we need to generate some text. So we write some uh, text to the system, to the model, and then the AI system will produce some written text that is similar to the human language and to the text and the language that we are using. So it actually generates coherent and meaningful text that resembles natural language and uh, human natural human communication. It is used in uh, NLP, hmm, natural language processing, in content creation, customer service, and coding uh, assistant as well. It processes this input data and generates uh, an output uh, text. It also involves in a training AI model on large data sets of text in order to learn those patterns and grammar and contextual information. And these models, they use this learned knowledge to generate a new, uh, a new text and new, new data. So the AI model takes seed input, we call it, such as sentences or keywords, and uses this learned knowledge to predict the most probable next word. So this is basically doing pattern matching. So I'm sure all of you are using uh, WhatsApp. So in WhatsApp, you you write, you send a message to someone. So you write, for example, good. And as soon as you write good, the system will generate a couple of words. If you write good, for example, then the system will generate for you good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So it is actually doing a pattern matching. It is displaying the most probable words that come after your first prompt or your first word. So in text generation, you are based on, it is actually based on predicting the most probable text or word or phrase that's supposed to come next so this model again it continues to generate text and it continues to generate coherent text until a desired length or a condition is met so it will continue to do this until you tell it to stop or to you know uh, hold so generative language models they are they are having inputs as text. So the input that will be provided to the model is in the form of text and the model will output some text, some other text, just like Google Translate. So I'm sure all of you are using Google Translate or some other you know, translation software. This is based on a generative language model that inputs some text. So you are writing, for example, the word good to the uh, translator and you are expecting this translator to translate the word good to Arabic, for example. So it is text to text. Another model, another software is called the Grammarly, which is basically identifies the, you know, the grammatical errors in, in a text, for example. So it is based on text to text model and also the chatbots such as chat GPT, so you are writing some input, some prompt to the chat GPT, and then we are expecting the chat GPT to uh, create uh, something else, a picture or a text or a video or something. We can also do what is called an image 
or, or a text to to image a text to to image and such as uh, we pick so you write you tell the model to uh, create a picture of a standing dog of a blue eyes dog and so on and we can also uh, create a text to video so we can create a video based on what you want this video to do we can also do the audio which is the text to speech google translate will do it because after you translate the 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 text or the the words you can do uh, a speech so you can listen to this text as well and you can also use a microsoft narrator which is built in in, in windows as well and we can also do we can also do text uh, to decision or a tax task which is the uh, personal assistant uh, such as uh, Siri or such as uh, Bixby and so on. So you are telling Siri to open uh, Google browser. You're telling Siri to uh, create an alarm at 8 a.m. for example or 8 uh, p.m. So all of those are based on the uh, generative language uh, models. And here is the Google uh, a Translate, for example. So uh, we are typing some some inputs here, uh, some text. Uh, we are expecting some some output uh, in the form of some other language. It is based on text to text. This is WhatsApp again. How are you? So after you type, how are you? It will you know display the most probable word that should come after your your prompt for example so it will say is it doing or are you how are you are you how are you doing so definitely this is more probable than this and in in text to text auto completion we can see it we can you know write a word on in google search and definitely it will tell us what are the next uh, probable words after your uh, first character or your first word that you have input. So this is again text to text, which is based on uh, auto completion. We can do a text to image. As I said, we can ask the uh, the model to create a picture of two dogs. Uh, one is the first dog has uh, red eyes and the second dog with a blue eyes, for example. So definitely this is called text to to image as well. We can also use another so many tools they are available. Um, DAL E open AI can also uh, do it. We can also do text to video. Uh, I have uh, you know uh, shown here some some text and we need to create a video based on this text. So this is a created uh, based on this video, but I cannot play it. So let me do. Mm, I, sh I should be able to play this video, but it says here a create a stylish woman walking down Tokyo a street filled with uh, warm glowing neons and and so on. But it will create this video and for some reason it is not a uh, playing. But anyway, you can we can do this. This is still under research and they're still in the development phase, but you can do it. There's a, a application or a model called Sura uh, under open AI that can do this text to speech. Also, as we said, we can do it in translator. We can convert text into audio or to speech. We can also do text to tasks to tasks such as you know in uh, in the uh, assistant or the personal assistant now we can also do uh, or apply uh, uh, ai and text generation and deep learning models into the chatbots and gemini is one of the uh, chatbots that are available it has been introduced in 2023 uh, by Google, so this is called Google Gemini uh, Chatbot. It's a powerful and versatile 
uh, AI model. It can be used for various tasks such as text generation, code generation, and image generation, and it works with different data types, even images and audio and video, and even code. It does also speech to text, so you can it's speak to the uh, chatbot, to the Gemini uh, chatbot, and you can also uh, provide some images to the uh, chatbot you are for example you upload an image to the chatbot to, to Gemini and you ask it you know tell me a summary about this this image or who is this person for example so this is a Gemini uh, chatbot for example I have provided uh, Gemini with a picture of uh, of a car and it says the image you sent me shows a blue Ford Mustang parked near a gray car in a parking lot. The Mustang is a sporty Kobe that has been in production since 1964 and so on. So it tells us some information and text based on um, the, the picture. Now in 2020, GPT or OpenAI, they, they introduced what is called the uh, GPT in three and in GPT three, there are more than 175 billion parameters or connections and features, and it was based on 500 billion words of training data. It is based on what is called a large language model, which is actually you know a huge amount of uh, data sets, and I think uh, they have you know uh, gathered and collected the whole web. They have you know based their chatbot or the GPT-3 on the whole web. So they are super powered language learners. They learn from the text and they can absorb large amount of and massive uh, amounts of information and data and in order to generate a human like text. So they perform language translation, they perform text summarization, they can perform, you know, question and answer and all what they do, all what they do is basically an incredible auto completion. And of course, the difference here is in, in scale. I have, uh, you know, a provided Gemini. I have written a Google Gemini, a prompt saying, can a dog give a birth to, to a chicken? And the answer was definitely logical. And I have given the same a prompt to chat GPT. And, you know, again, the response was, very very similar but you know it, it was actually logical as well so i was you know doing so this comparison analysis between the chat gpt and the uh, google gemini they are very powerful both of them so the in the last 10 minutes or or so let's let's do some hints and tips on how to write and create an effective chat a prompt or effective uh, chat GPT a prompt, for example. So what is a prompt? A prompt in chat GPT is basically the phrase or the question or instruction that you you as a user, you are giving the chat GPT. It initiates a conversation between you and the chat GPT to get it to perform a specific task. It is the starting point that will guide ChatGPT into its response. So effective prompt, writing an effective prompt is significantly will improve the quality of the output and the relevance of the generated output. So some hints and tips to create effective prompts. Be clear and specific. So write your words and your prompts clearly and provide context context is very important for example i am uh, preparing uh, a presentation on generative ai to deliver it in uh, in a conference for example so this is the context so you should include relevant background information to the chat gpt and this is going to be very helpful ask open-ended questions don't ask a question that the answer will be yes or no or true or false how to uh, create uh, a slide on for example chat gpt effective prompt okay 
what is so use the wh equations in your asking use a proper grammar and syntax try to use proper grammar and syntax don't you know enter into the prompt uh, wrong or incorrect grammar or uh, syntax avoid ambiguity so be clear as much as you can and also include keywords for example include supervised learning unsupervised learning deep learning machine learning okay so those keywords those keywords will make a difference break down the complex question so if it is a complex question then better to break it down into multiple equations or multiple lines uh, provide feedback to to chat gpt which means you know tell it that this is effective this has been effective this has not been effective this is useful this is not useful and experiment and iterate with different prompts which means it try to even repeat the same question in a different manner and ask gpt or chat gpt to uh, clarify tell it to i don't understand can you rephrase this can you revise this so this is also very helpful now in in chat gpt a prompt the uh, length matter so you should indicate a desired word count in your prompt to control the response length so for example tell it that i want a paragraph on uh, machine learning create a paragraph one paragraph half a page or create a summary of or on machine learning that is for example 300 words 300 letters and so on specify the style of a tune and tune for example do you want a formal report do you want a casual email and also you can provide references provide references if relevant offer links to articles or sources to guide chat gpt in its research for the factual topic so tell it that you can refer to www uh, for example microsoft.com to find some answers so this is this is better also start simple so because the the questions and the prompts they will be uh, cascaded start begin with a basic prompt and gradually increase the complexity as you get more comfortable experiment and refine which means a try different prompt and see how they affect the output then you refine you revise your prompt based on what you have seen and what is the result then talk to the ai like you are talking to a person this is very important because these are you know uh, language models so they are uh, mimicking humans and they are understanding mainly what humans can do or in a similar manner tell the ai to assume an identity or a profession for example tell chat gpt that uh, i am or as a for example a ceo as a ceo generate a summary on uh, chat gpt as a ceo generate a summary or create a summary on machine learning and so on so this is you're telling it means that you are telling i to assume a certain identity or profession as a coder as a developer as a full stack developer okay use why do you think that also ask chat gpt tell it why do you think this is so and so why what evidence supports your answer so you are talking to chat gpt as if you are talking to to a person what evidence support your answer tell it re-ask the question chat gpt will often change its answer with each question so the more you revise the question the more answers and responses that you will get chat gpt will retain its awareness of the previous conversation if the current page is open if you are still you know communicating with ChatGPT on the same page so the responses <clears throat> and the conversations are retained which means you can refine and re-ask your question again and again and it will and you will see some different uh, responses so this is an effective 
a prompt example. So let's go over this example in the remaining five minutes. I am a senior a product manager at Apple. Hmm? So you are presenting here, you are posing, you are telling that I am, you are saying this is the persona of the product manager. You are telling it that I am the product manager. This is called a persona, so this is important. Then have, have unveiled the latest Apple product in collaboration with Tesla and received 200 higher orders. This is basically called context. So you have to provide some context. This is now the task. This is what you want ChatGPT to do. I want ChatGPT to write an email to Tim Cookie. This is my boss. So this is the task that you are uh, asking. The email should include a header section, project background, and business result. So this is basically an example. You are telling the chat GPT as an example, do this. Use a clear and concise language and write in a confident, friendly tone. This is the tone. So you are asking it to create an email that is concise, clear, and you know, in a confidently manner. So this is the example now, you know, the, the example or the prompt that we have created, and it should, it is a must that you should have a task. Otherwise, ChatGPT will not do anything. Okay, so the task is mandatory. Context is also mandatory. Giving example is optional. Persona is important. So you are posing, you are telling, ChatGPT that I am the CEO, I am the product manager, I am the full stack developer, and the format of the uh, of the email or of the output. So what is the uh, expected output? It's an email, and this is the tone, as we said, confidently clear, concise. So these are you know very important to follow when you are creating a, an effective a prompt in ChatGPT. Now, when it comes to, to ChatGPT applications, okay, as we said, there are so many different applications that we have uh, highlighted earlier. Customer service uh, chatbots or ChatGPT can provide instance, uh, instant uh, 24 by 7 customer support, answering queries, resolving certain issues, content creation. It will aid in writing articles, generating uh, and creating uh, content and even composing poetry or stories. So you can tell ChatGPT to create uh, a poem, for example. And of course, in education and tutoring, you can assist, you can use ChatGPT to, to assist in learning by providing summaries and uh, answers to students and students' questions and uh, explanations. In programming, you can also ask ChatGPT to create some some code, some to de, to to debug a code, for example, to explain certain programming concept or even to provide some uh, coding examples. Challenges to to ChatGPT. One of the uh, most uh, and important challenges are basically understanding the context to ChatGPT. So that's why you have to explain you have to provide some background knowledge about the topic or about your your prompt generating coherent text this is one of the challenges to ensure that the generated text is coherent and it is relevant and maintains a logical flow especially in longer conversation and avoiding biases now, this is one of the challenges also that we are hoping the chat bots and chat GPT to, to avoid because chat GPT responses and chat bots responses, they can inadvertently produce bias. They produce bias or inappropriate responses based on the present 
a training data based on the training data that has been presented to them. So depending on the training data, the bias can be uh, identified. Now, uh, handling ambiguities. So ambiguous input or unclear user intent can confuse chatbots. That's why we have uh, uh, explained earlier that you have to be unambiguous. You have to write your, uh, uh, your prompts clearly. So in order to have ChatGPT to avoid un um, uh, amb ambiguous output and responses. Now, sometimes and chatbots, they are trained on handling ambiguity effectively and in order to uh, provide you know output and responses with some uh, accuracy and even they are trained to avoid certain political for example responses or certain other uh, responses that are considered for example unethical it is not supposed to to talk about it and so on dealing with scale so scaling chatbots to handle large volume of conversations while maintaining performance and response in real time application. This is one of the challenges because the more conversation, the uh, the large volume of conversation can affect the uh, performance. Misinformation. Misinformation means that a plausible sounding but incorrect. It it looks like it is uh, logical, but it is actually incorrect or non sensel answer which may spread misinformation if not checked so it will produce some information that might not be uh, logical that may, might be incorrect of course still because it's a, it's a machine and it's not perfect data privacy especially when you're using applications like customer service uh, applications and you hand you're you're handling sensitive personal data by AI, it poses some privacy concerns. When, when you search for a certain person uh, in ChatGPT, it will tell you that, you know, uh, I cannot provide information about uh, persons, for example. So this is very important uh, add on to ChatGPT, but, you know, still one of the challenging challenges, dependence and misuse, over reliance on AI for tasks like homework assistance can lead to issues with learning. So this is the dependence and the over dependence and over reliance is one of the main challenges, especially in uh, schools and in uh, learning. Thank you very much for your uh, patience. And uh, we are uh, looking forward to, to hear your feedback. So please scan this uh, QR code and provide your uh, input and you provide your feedback. Um, I hope that I have uh, been able to uh, properly uh, explain what chat GPT can do and uh, what generative AI uh, is, starting from the uh, classical AI uh, up to uh, chatbots. So please uh, share your feedback. Uh, with us. Your feedback is very important and uh, I'm ready to to, uh, to answer some questions if you have any. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mahana, for a wonderful presentation. Uh, and um, I would like to uh, thank all the participants. We, we will still go for the questions. And uh, but before that, I would request once again, as Mahana said that, uh, please fill in the feedback. Uh, there are two options. You can click the link from the chat window on your right side or you can scan this QR code and you can fill in the feedback. So we, we can have questions and uh, this is the last session of our learning festival and uh, glad to see uh, a very uh, decent audience participating in this uh, last session as well. Overall, we had nine sessions starting from Monday morning till today, which is a Thursday afternoon. And uh, I would uh, like to uh, announce once again that next week, we will be sending a link to all the participants with the recorded videos and the presentations. So now feel free to ask questions and fill in the feedback forms. Thank you, Ghazi, for uh, giving us this opportunity to speak about uh, ChatGPT and generative AI.
thank you guys and thank you everybody for uh, your dedication and patience. Yes, guys, you will you will get the report the, the recordings next week, as Ghazi uh, said. And we can also share the uh, presentation slides from from my side. I don't mind. We can also uh, send you the slides. OK, uh, one question is uh, it is scrolling fast. So uh, somebody is asking, give us some good and informative AI sites like there are some AI sites for images, for video, for for uh, proposals. So uh, later on, can we also send them or if you have any any deck now in, uh, which has different AI sites for different uh, purpose? Yeah, yeah, we can we can do this. Uh, OK, I will you know summarize it and, and share it uh, with you and you can okay. forward it to all the participants. Of course, yes, we can do this. OK, great. thank you guys. Yes, we will we will share the slides. Meanwhile, you can post uh, any questions if you have. You can also turn on your mic and you can post the question as well. Thank you, Saeed. Thank you, Rahim. Yeah, so far we have received 48 feedback forms. So yeah, please uh, keep sending the feedbacks and we are receiving it. Thank you.